هذا هاي الشتله هاي ذهب الاسود شخصيا بمسك سلاح بحربها اذا بدها تحاربني بلقمه عيشه كل اللي بياخذوا اللي بتعرض حشيش ما بياخذوا خيروا ابن بعلبك الهرمل ما بين القبر وما بين الحبس عندنا نقتين نقتل حرامية بقوا هن الحرامية Lebanon grows so much cannabis that this year, international consulting firm McKinsey & Company recommended it be legalized for medical use in an effort to boost Lebanon's cash-strapped economy. The country is one of the world's top five producers of cannabis resin, otherwise known as hash or hashish. Most of it is farmed here, in the Bekaa Valley, a lawless stretch of land that crosses nearly the entire landmass of the country. Cannabis farming flourished here during the 15-year civil war, which ended in 1990. Farmers say no other crop guarantees the same yield as cannabis does in the valley's harsh conditions. In the early 90s and partially in response to pressure from the U.S., the government outlawed cannabis farming and over the next two decades followed a strict policy of destroying the crops annually. It resulted in deadly clashes and a lot of bad blood between the state and the farmers. But then something changed. The outbreak of war in Syria was an unexpected boon for Lebanon's cannabis farmers. Lebanon suddenly lacked the resources to destroy the cannabis crops every year and still protect its borders. Farmers say their trade has grown by 50% since 2012. Exports of Lebanon's illegal hashish industry are already worth an estimated 200 million US dollars every year. If it were legal, it would be the country's third most valuable export. And now it seems the government wants its own piece of the profits. In July of this year, House Speaker Nabih Berri told the US ambassador to Lebanon that parliament is considering the legalization of cannabis farming for medical use. There's just one catch. Any attempt at legalization would mean working with the same group of people the state has spent decades antagonizing. كان أي شاب مثلي أو أي أو أي مزارع كبير بالعمر بده يطعم أولاده أو أي شاب عنده أحلام بده يحققها بده يعمر بيت ويتجوز ويأسس عائلة لحتى يقدر يعيش مثل هالعالم عايش بس هون ما في إلا زراعة الحشيشة الواحد يزرعها ولا يعيش منها بشوف إيه كتير شباب لأنه من عاطلة عن العمل ما فيش وظائف تتوظفك ميت علي he helps out on his family's cannabis farm from time to time He's using an alias and does not want to show us his face, fearing retribution from the state. He was born and raised here in Yamuna, a town in the troubled Baalba Kermil district. Ali, like around 80% of the residents here, relies on cannabis farming to survive. He carries a pistol for protection and worries the state might go back to its policy of destroying the crops. If it does, he would consider another armed conflict against the government. اجت بدها ببيت رح يكون السلاح الحربي تبع العالم رح يطلع بوجهه، هاي ردة فعله، شخصيا بمسك سلاحه بحربها، إذا بدها تحاربني بلقمة عيشة يعني بالخبزة، اللي بدي ياكلها عم تحاربني فيها، نحن ما عاد تشريها إنه يشرعوها لحتى العالم تقدر تستفيد منها، أو إذا ما بدهم يشرعوها يأمنوا بدل للعالم مثلا يأمنوا وظائف لهالشباب العاطلة عن العمل لهالعالم، بس معهم الدولة مش طالع من أمره شيء. علي is just 19 years old. Once he finishes school, he will likely go into the hashish industry full-time if he does not find alternatives. But even for his family, cannabis is not as lucrative as you might think. Harvesting season is approaching. Cannabis must soon be picked and sold as a fresh plant to distributors for an average of 400 US dollars per kilo. In makeshift factories nearby, it goes through three to four processes before it turns into hash. It is then smuggled abroad, mainly to nearby markets in Syria, Jordan, Cyprus, Turkey, and even arch enemy Israel.
Yamuna, like many towns in the area, is on the front lines of the battle to legalize the crop. Cannabis has been farmed here for at least 80 years. The plant is so widespread, it even grows on the side of the road. Jamal Shraif is a longtime local official in Yamuna. His official title in Arabic is Al Mukhtar, which literally translates to the chosen one. He says he has no trust in the Lebanese state whatsoever. Shreif's distrust of the state comes from years of unkept promises. In 2012, shortly before harvesting season, authorities came in with tractors to destroy the cannabis fields here. But Yamuna's residents fought back, blocking all roads leading into the town. After intense negotiations, which included the Minister of the Interior himself, authorities were finally allowed to destroy the crops peacefully in exchange for promises to bring development projects and alternative crops to the area. But those promises never materialized, and the citizens here are wary of a future partnership. Sami, also an alias, is what Ali could be 10 years from now. He makes around 10,000 US dollars per year off of hashish, which he says is necessary to support his three children. But he is conflicted about his involvement in the trade. <laughs> Sammy also plants apples, but says cannabis guarantees a return because it can withstand the harsh weather conditions of the Bekaa Valley. His concerns about corruption are not unfounded. Lebanon is ranked 143rd out of 180 countries on Transparency International's Index on Corruption. When it comes to legalizing cannabis in Lebanon, there are thousands of people that need to be dealt with first. There are over 45,000 outstanding arrest warrants in the Ba'alba Kermel district, most of them for offenses linked to the drug trade. That's roughly 7% of the entire population of the district. The clans which control the drug trade here would need to see those warrants scrapped. Qasim Tlais says he represents their interests. 
جعفر زعيتر علاو نصر الدين امهز المؤديد المصري كل العشائر انا الناطق باسم لجنه العفو العام بمنطقه بعلبك الهرمي We met him in his town of Brital where in July of 2018 eight people were killed by army forces including a suspected drug trafficking baron in an army raid on his home بهذه الفوضى اللي حصلت أكيد بدو عيش اضطر اضطر لحتى يقوم يزرع أو يتاجر أو ما أنا عم برر له لحتى يكون لا سمح الله إنه شجع فسيده بس أما مرق لبنان بفوضى وهذه الفوضى شجعته على عمل كذا فهلا وقت بصير في استقرار وبطل بدو يستقر وبطل يعني وقت صار في دولة واستقرار بطل يتاجر طب بيجي بضل لحه بقول له انت مجرم ما بيقول انا يا عمي خلص After we finished our interview, Plyce insisted on escorting us out of Brital. He said it was for our own safety. But not everyone in Lebanon supports legalizing cannabis in the first place. We left Brital and drove 80 kilometers west to Bikirki, the headquarters of the Lebanese Maronite Church, which is the largest Christian denomination in the country. We came here to meet Paul Sayah, an archbishop of the church. Sayah staunchly opposes the proposed legislation. We have a big problem of drug addiction. Uh, and if the plantation of marijuana is legalized, uh, it will spread uh, like fire. His claim is hard to verify. But we'd heard from many people here that smoking hashish was widespread. But no one would actually go on camera and talk about it. Smoking hashish is a criminal offense in Lebanon that could land you in jail for up to three years. In 2016 alone, Lebanese authorities made over 4,700 arrests related to the drug. Had we had a government capable of controlling the situation and, and uh, making sure that the only use of this drug would be for medical reasons, uh, I think the problem uh, would be different. They know very well they won't be able to control it. If they want to convince me that they can control it, why don't they control it now? Okay. It is being planted against the law. Sayah believes the move is politically motivated. Just to, to, uh, to uh, gain some popularity, uh, you know, with the, with the local people. You know, say, look, I'm doing things for you. I want to uh, help you uh, cultivate this and, and uh, sell it for good money and so on. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a political racket, I think. Uh, it could be. But according to politicians themselves, Legalization could bring some very real benefits to the country, which has seen its economic growth go down to 2% from 9% before the outbreak of the Syrian conflict. In Lebanon's capital, Beirut, we meet Bilal Abdullah, a member of parliament for the Progressive Socialist Party. Its leader first voiced his support for legalization back in 2014. <laughs> He believes that the law will be a sufficient first step to rebuild the trust between the farmers and the state. The 
If it passes, it still won't change anything for people who smoke hashish. They will still face strict penalties. Officials estimate cannabis could be a $1 billion industry for Lebanon. But it could take months, if not years, before a law legalizing it gets passed. In the meantime, cannabis farmers are stuck in limbo. Their only livelihood is still very much illegal.